quickly and we'll do a clap. So after three. One, two, three. That's our sync clap. We are now in sync. Uh, that's how we stay in sync, and that's technical. So. Okay, I call Justin. Justin? I'm just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're in sync. I don't... Oh, I see. I thought you meant that if that movie in time. I said that as he well. He wants a solo career. Later. <laughs> no, we have to go back to watching time travel at the end, don't we? Yeah, we do. Carl, you're, you're, for some reason, have gone really um, laggy on the old computer screen. Is it just his video? If I kill my Could video, will that help? help? Put the camera off. To be honest, your sound might have been Is okay anyway. I think it prioritizes sound. I think you can sound. keep the video on. Um, yeah. And it says, like, I have a message that says your recording quality is higher. It's just yeah. sending yeah. broadcast. Okay. okay. All right. Got to leave the camera on, mate. Sorry. Okay. Shall we do some go time, Edge? All right. Go time. All right. Here, here comes some music. Let's do it. It's go time. Hello and welcome to Go Time. I'm Matt Ryer. Today we're talking about the bits of Go that we tend to avoid, whether deliberately or by happenstance. Perhaps we've been burned in the past, or maybe there's just an alternative that we prefer. What's so wrong with What's so wrong with that? Well, to help me find out what's so wrong with it, I'm joined by John Calhoun. Hello, John. Hey, Matt. How are you? Good. Uh, good to see you, mate. As always, how have you been? Pretty good. We're also joined by Carl Johnson. Carl's back. Hello, Carl. Back. Uh, uh, you know, today I did not wash my hair with Red Bull, so maybe I will be slightly coherent. <laughs> see, no promises. <laughs> we'll see, indeed. Um, okay, so we'll kick off with the icebreaker. If it's a new section, I was thinking about we could do like icebreakers. That's probably just the theme. Like, it's probably me just saying that, but with reverb added. So it's like, icebreakers. And that's it. That's it for like a copyright or trademark infringement. Isn't that could, like a mint? Could be. Yeah, it could be. If that's, if that is a mint, uh, depending on how litigious that, that section may get renamed in the future, but fingers crossed for icebreakers. Um, John, people say to me, we love it when you make a joke and then John carries on as if nothing has happened, like some kind of robotic <laughs> Android. I know you're not a robot, mate, because they can actually appear quite human these days. But if you were a robot, what would be the one robotic superpower that you'd look forward to using? Uh, I don't know if it's a superpower, but uh, some robot antivirus power. software would be pretty sweet right now. Oh. I uh, currently have COVID. <laughs> oh, oh, no. It's terrible. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's all good. I'm... Something like that would be pretty sweet. Um, it would also yeah. suck to get somebody like, hey, we're going to disable the use of your arms unless you send crypto to this address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's just pros and cons because you've got that, those problems, but also you can jump really high. So, Can they, though? Yeah, have you seen I, them? I, I got to get back into looking at these, whoever makes all those crazy robots. Yeah, uh, the Boston, Boston Dynamics, Dynamics robot. Yeah. I don't know if they Carl, have any videos when... of their dogs jumping really high, but maybe. Yeah, they they'll get there. I mean, this is I'm talking in five years. We're not I'm not talking today technology. I'm talking oh, about okay. the kind of robotic technology we're going to have in five years time. Probably brilliant. Um, really strong legs, good strong backs, just the whole package, probably. And you can do anything, Carl. What would you do if you when you've got eventually your robot body and you? If I did consciousness downloaded into it, I think what I would do really literal about, about common expressions and idioms, right? Extremely about it, you know. know if somebody's, somebody's like, oh, like, I can't even think of an idiot now, but uh, uh, you know, if somebody's like, get out, and then I would be like, okay, I'm getting out, and then I would just leave the room, room. you know, right? right. Yeah, like you're about to go do a play, and somebody says, break a leg. 
Yeah, then I would break their leg. leg. Ah. Pot strength. Yeah. You gotta I don't be know. careful when you're talking to these robots. From chat GPT is all the stuff in science fiction. Media is like totally impossible and, you know, have the three laws of robotics. That doesn't make any sense. Or like, you know, robots wouldn't be confused by liars, paradoxes and and like with catchy yeah that robots are like totally confused by this stuff I, I i did a thing where i asked chat gpt you know, the classic riddle uh of the sphinx is what has four legs in the morning and two legs in the day and three legs at night but i asked it in the morning and two legs a day and four legs at night and it was like it not only as if i had asked the normal riddle which is fine I'm like if you mm person probably Probably they would get confused and like say oh you (laughs) but then it It was like like, yes you mean a person because a person three legs when they are a baby and crawling on their hands and knees and four four legs legs when they're an old person and using a cane and it's like it it like not only explains it wrong wrong, but using like the wrong like tripped up on on it so yeah i'm really looking for you can't use contractions and and, like just have to be very formal and it's it, they're not really supposed to be formal it's just that that's how the human reinforced learning made them be <laughs> i love that though i think that kind of way of talking that's the way you want to go it reminds me of genies like um you've got to be really oh, yeah. careful Super when you're liberal. talking to mm-hmm. a genie yeah they and they're like you need a lawyer you need to have a lawyer with you when you if you ever come across a genie because they will get you. They'll, you'll be like, I want to have a million dollars, and then they'll crush you with a million dollars or something. Yeah, no, they'll put a million right, pennies. Right, right. My thought, you, you use your first two wishes, wishes to, like, set up your third wish. is like, I wish to know what the perfect wish is, and then, like, like your second wish is oh, yeah. say hey, the perfect wish without messing it up somehow. Either. Mm. Finally, you do it, you know. You can't just jump straight to the perfect wish. You gotta, gotta tee it up with the first. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to do that. You, sh- you, you shouldn't need to waste two wishes <laughs> just to get around these loopholes that you know he's going to f- try and find. I Same like, like with the you know, GPT, you have to like really start with. Um... Don't let that get. John, you're yeah, ruining it. I'm just saying they're completely imaginary. We've decided. <laughs> That they're going to be like these the rules, like not evil, but they're like they're intentionally like taking anything we say and twisting it. Like we've just decided that's what all genies would do. If they, if but this is, I that's think that's the thing do. that like ChatGPT, because it's trained, trained on, on the internet and it's trained on fiction, it like I, I should behave like a genie or I should behave like, like a a computer a story or something like that's what it thinks is normal it doesn't have like eyes or hands or legs it doesn't interact with the real world it doesn't know the different yeah. other than people saying say. this is truth and this is fiction say wrong, wrong. for example f- fictional works that say that they're and stuff so well, anyway just i feel like this genie stuff is important because now chat gpt is going to be like, like all right when somebody asks for a million dollars i'm going to pour a million pennies on their as flat as a pancake, because that's what you're supposed to do as a magical AI. A genie. That's what's bound to happen. Uh, my elderly neighbor recently, uh, she she just said to me, "Maybe I'll be back." She's like, "Maybe I'll be back," like a like some kind of tentative Terminator. And it's like mm-hmm. that. I quite like the idea of that. The machines going the other way and being very uncertain and not sure and stuff. It's like even even at the at the point of like booleans. It's like, uh, I, don't, I can't decide, I'm not sure. Just so they become more human. I mean, uh-huh. that would make coding very weird. You'd have like, if true, if maybe true. like Yeah. If true, please. I if you feel, feel like it. Where no, it's just like with a regular there. person. <laughs> you go, if, if you feel, feel like it. <laughs> like it, handle yeah. the API request. Yeah. No, but that, that's a good way to do it, because sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Then you have to be like, all right, if you don't feel like doing that, wait a little bit and try again. Like, it could be a new kind of programming that is just sort of very kind-based. Not kind-based, but like, you know, nice. Uh, so, Matt, if yes. you had a robotic superpower, what would yours be? 
I would love to be able to just randomly fax people if I could just be like, figure out their number. I feel like you picked the one superpower that like, it's a terrible time to have it. No, I can no, fax but... anyone and there's no fax machines in the world. Well, but if it's like someone's there and they're, they're checking, they're like, oh, I'm just going to check this security camera and they've, they're going to see me doing something on it. I'll quickly, in the back of my head, just be like, blip, 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 and I'll fax that, and they'll be like, oh, hang on, I'll just check that in a minute, I'm getting a fax through. Then they go and read the fax, and then I've got enough time to delete the footage. Yeah, because so, the fax is so slow. Like, they're they're basically taken out yeah. for, like, five whole minutes handling the fax. Yeah, exactly. And they've got to turn the wheel on the fax machine to make it go. So it's busy, 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 busy. Oh, what's going on meanwhile? Just me clicking in the back, deleting footage. I don't know what fax machines have a wheel you turn. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember them, really. I've not done any research. Um, Carl, I've got another icebreaker for you. Icebreaker, patent pending. Um, lawsuits possibly pending, because we think that might already be a thing. But uh, assuming not, Carl, your icebreaker. You are in a cave. Dark, dank cave. It stinks. Uh, there's a little lamp on the floor. It's got an Apple logo on it. So you rub it, and it's like, oh, what's this? Bloody Tim Cook genie pops out and says, right, you can have three wishes. What do you want for your next iPhone, or for your next phone feature? You can have any features you want. You get to pick the next three. Or you can just oh. pick one. What's your top feature you want for your I phone? I think the top feature would be to bring back the, uh, the headphone jack seven shape uh i mm. guess iphone se yeah just bring back that i thought se but phone jack yeah i'm still mad at them for taking it away so because it yeah because i had i think they, they needed to take it away on the iphone 10 it was like bigger to edge and whatever but they knew people, people would get mad at them when they did that so they're like okay, okay we'll just really We'll remove the headphone jack on the iPhone 7 first, and we'll have a year of people being mad about it. And the next year, year we'll release the 10, and people will the the headphone jack by then, which totally worked. It was like a completely successful <laughs> approach of theirs, but uh, I'm still mad about the headphone jack. I wouldn't even use it. I just want it. Yeah. It's weird how they've probably got models like modeling how angry everyone's going to be about stuff and they'll use that to sort of inform it won't they make decisions based on that yeah, yeah. i guess okay. the, uh, it, it's probably going to happen so it's not a, a funny one it's like the USB C thing it's like yeah i guess it would be good if they went to USB C just so yeah it's the same charger as some other stuff but that's going to happen so i wouldn't tops. on something that will happen anyway Right, yeah, I don't. Well, you're wasting your first two wishes normally, just propping up your third one. Mm -hmm. Tim Cook's got a lot of legal power behind him, to be fair, so you probably do want to be careful in this case. Um, well, talking about wishing things here and gone, let's get into our meat. Let's get into the meat of our subject, or or you know, plant-based protein, uh, depending on your preferences. Um, what we're going to talk about what we would get rid of or or at least what we don't use what we avoid in go and part of this i think is interesting because you know all this stuff we have to learn and if we if we can cut out some of that we can save that some of that learning process maybe there's advantages there um but also it probably comes for me more down to main writing maintainable things so it's always about being very explicit and clear so that when I come back later, I don't have to decode anything. It's all kind of laid out in front of me. Uh, and in that spirit, the first one I would probably, I probably don't ever use is the new keyword. The new keyword. And this is the thing that makes, you know, makes things. So how can you do without it? Well, of course, there are other formats. Uh, like you use the, the, the structure name with the with the curly braces immediately after to instantiate it, usually taking a pointer sometimes at the start of that. Um, and I like that pattern more because even if you're not setting any fields explicitly, you know, you it's the same as if you do. So it's the same format both ways. It's not like a different format just because you're not setting any fields. 
How do you feel about that? Do you use new? I do use new, um, but I'm in generic. Trying to make this catch on. I think maybe this was on my Twitter. I don't remember if I tweeted this or I mastodonned it, uh, but one way or the other, I mm. I tried to to make it a thing to call uh, uh, to call this construct the 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 go winking newt. <laughs> uh, so in generic go, right? So as of the last year, go has had generics. Uh, one of the kind of issues, which I, I hope that they fix sometime is that there's no good way to say return the zero value of whatever type I'm dealing with, right? Mm. So inside if, of a generic code, code statement, you might say like my, my type and I just want you to return whatever the zero value of T is. is. Um, um, and so there's a couple ways you can get, get around, around it. it. And the, the way, way that I think most people get around being, you know, var X or, or whatever, whatever T, we've got an X, which is uh, of type T, and it's the zero. You say return X, or, you know, var zero T return zero. Um, and that's what most... Hmm. The thing you can do, which is hard to talk about on a podcast because talking about syntax on a podcast is always death, death uh, is you can, can do, do return <laughs> star new parentheses T parentheses. So it's like the winking newt, the star newt. <laughs> uh, and if you say that, that will return the zero value of whatever T is. So like if you think about it logically, what it's doing is it uses new T to create a pointer to T and then the star means dereference the pointer to t. And since you had just created it, it's the zero value. Um, and so it's like this weird little idiom that's popping up in generic Go code. And that's basically the only time I use new is in that particular construct. And really, I'm just doing it because it's it's kind of cheeky that it's. I assume, mm -hmm. you, also, I assume you also just want like a one liner, like return this versus like yeah. you declare the variable up front and then have it available. Yeah, right. it's it's That's all fantastic. you can do it as an expression. Yeah, you don't have to like, like set it, it up by for var zero. T. You can just do it right in line. Yeah, asterisk. There's no more efficient. T. Is it? Uh, I think disassembly. It's it's identical. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but you can do it in line. Well, quite a good use of new there. Um, but yeah, Depends really, I have an new. issue Open on the go. It's not my issue. There's an issue, issue open on the Go issue tracker. Oh, I tried to open a one and duplicate. That's the answer. Uh, but there's an issue to try to create a new called zero. Uh, and so you would just type out, you know, Z E. It would return the zero type of the value. Uh, so hopefully someday that'll be a thing, the, the cross-eyed newt. But until well, then, then. Yeah. cross-eyed newt. So with the zero value thing you're talking about, was that proposed only for generics or for everything? Uh, it was it was for generics. There it was like some talk, talk about, about how you can use nil and but not others, and maybe like you should be able to use nil zero. everywhere. Where, yeah. yeah, or yeah, turn whatever, whatever and then, then an error. Um, it's they return zero comma error, something like that. But, uh, but and then the, the use case that I also really want it for is um, for comparison. Uh, and the last episode I was on, I talked about comparable types and how some types are or not. Um, if you have like a function, you're, you're allowed to compare it to nil, but you're, you're not allowed to compare it to other functions. So then when, when you're writing generic code, there's no good way to say compare this to, to nil. Like you, you have to use reflection. So if there was a zero value, mm -hmm. then you could just just with zero value, and then, then uh, okay, okay, cool. John, why don't you tell us about something that you barely ever use in your whole life? Um, so one of them is uh, full slice expressions. So I don't know if you've seen those or used them at all, but normally when you do a slice, like you have uh, when you're trying to like get a slice of an array, you mm -hmm. might do like a and then the square bracket then like the starting index the ending index, or colon then the ending index yeah. you can actually add like a third value there which i believe is the essentially the capacity of the new slice you're creating oh yeah inside the square brackets right yeah so mm -hmm. 
I, I've seen cases where it's useful. I'm not trying to say like this definitely shouldn't exist in the language, mm. but I don't ever use it because in my mind, most people have never seen it in their life. So if you put it in code, the first mm. time they see it, they're going to be like, what is going on right now? Yeah. And I don't tend to like things like that where people are going to see it and just have no idea what's going on unless there's a really good reason for it. Yeah. But like, I guess... see it and they would, like, just Maybe naively, you would assume that, oh, there's a third. Maybe the third thing is like the stride, right? Like, so the idea of like, you're skipping, skipping or you're doing I don't know. I would guess it would be like maybe this makes it go backwards, the slice or thing. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't just like naively guess like the capacity. You really have to like look it up. No, the only clue to that before you see it. The fact. Yeah, the only clue to that is in the make because you get the the extra arguments, but Mm -hmm. that's so different to this. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like you're saying yeah, one to three, definitely three promise like you're just being very clear again setting that variable twice but yeah it does look quite weird i genuinely had forgotten that was even there john i I, uh... forget, I saw it at one point where it can be useful for like i forget, i think it was like the data structure type thing like if you're doing a heap or something it can be a useful way to make sure you're not one overriding existing values in a slice when you just want to get a sub slice of it mm-hmm. um but two to like sort of make sure that you can keep on essentially adding to a new slice. I think it was adding to a slice without like making the capacity too big. I think that mm. was one of the cases, but it's been a while, so I'd have to go check. Yeah, Maybe. pretty much in all of the cases where you want to use it, it's the thing that you want to do is to say, if anybody appends to this slice, they should get a copy and not keep using it. Yeah. Um, I, and there's a, there's a function... There's a function in the... Uh, the experimental generic... This package... Approved to be added to go next fall. Um, function there called slices.clip. Is it basically it sets the capacity of the slice to whatever the current length of the slice is. Um, and so that way, if anybody does append to it, they'll get a copy instead of rewriting the existing. Uh, and I feel like that's so much clearer. If, if you're reading some code and you see slices.clip, it's like, okay, that's what they're doing. They're just like making sure nobody yeah, overwrites the end of the But like if you if you see the three syntax, yeah, it's pretty weird. I think I also don't like that performance-wise, I feel like somebody could... I'm assuming that whenever you do like a slice and you set the capacity, that at that point, if you go to append, it then has to copy to a new slice at that point. So, mm-hmm. you know, like a new underlying array. So I think if people aren't aware of sort of the performance impact, it could lead to weird code. Whereas like if you do it like you said, where you call slice.cap, I feel like it's a little bit more logical to look at the docs and be like, okay, this is actually going to have a performance um, impact if we do it a lot or if we do it in the wrong way or something. Mm -hmm. Have you got one, Carl? Uh, Uh, Yeah. Um, One I have an issue that's open. Go tracker... Uh, when did I open this issue? Uh, uh, let's say what's the issue number. So the issue, issue number two one two. Proposal go, go to remove, remove bear, bear return, return. Uh, and this says August third, uh, twenty seventeen. So it's been a little while. while. Uh, I don't need to implement this one, <laughs> but they <laughs> haven't closed it, so it can still have. <laughs> uh, remove bear return. Uh, um, so, so in go, uh, there's this, this idea, idea of name. Right, so a name return. Mm-hmm. What you can do is, in the same way that you name your arguments that go into the function, you can name the, the arguments that come, especially when there's more than one. But you could also do it if there's just one. So, so with what you do is, you can only use it when your function arguments are named. You can inst- return x comma y to say, return. and since it knows that x and y are the return. return it'll just automatically return X and Y. Um, I think that having, having named returns is really nice. Like you can set it up. It's uh, It helps for cases where you need to, um, you want to like overwrite the return value and defer. Um, it's good for, uh, it's but nice then the naked return. Sometimes to describe the outcoming arguments. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, if you have an interface, you could. So anytime you're returning two of the same type, like, okay, the first one is the min, and the second one is the max, or, 
Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, but the bear return, I feel like, is just like, yeah, you probably, but you should just go, go ahead and be explicit about what you're returning. You don't need to have the bear return keyword. Yeah. So with that, do you find yourself using name return values less often because you're worried somebody might use a naked return? Uh, no, I still end up using named return values, values a lot. But yeah, bear, bear, the bear return don't use very yeah. often. Well, I asked because I think it's just a weird head game with myself where mm -hmm. I liked named returns because they make a lot of code much, much clearer. But I like weirdly avoid them sometimes because I'm like, well, I don't want somebody to like start using an, an, you know, a naked return at this point. I, and I don't know why, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I, it's not like I'm working in a code base where I'm not going to see the code and like, you know, be like, hey, let's put a name or put the actual return values here. But just for whatever mm -hmm. reason, I could see that being like a, a head game type thing. Yeah, you can run into trouble with it too. Like, if you have like nested scopes, like let's say you're, you name the return error, error for error. Um, and uh, have a nested scope and you say, you know, if error, error whatever, error, and error is not return. Well, you don't realize it, but you, you have created a new scope and your error, the error variable well, is an is a different one than the return variable. You did a new yeah. scope and you didn't actually return. Turn, change but now you do a bare return and uh turns the return variable and not the one anyway so you can run into these bugs like yeah. and probably your linter or some static typer catch that but you, you know, know it's just better not to have the issue at all yeah i do wonder if with like some of these things if we got together and just made a new linter that was just extremely opinionated about stuff like this and it was just like the most strict linter like one that really gets in your kitchen like really gets mm. up in your business because i'd have it deban double uh, vertical lines if i ever see two vertical lines in code that's a pet peeve of mine what do you mean by two vertical like lines? A, like an or two statement empty lines oh, oh i sorry, see just like Two blank lines. That's it. Yeah, I forgot what um, blank. Oh, the word blank. Like blank lines, okay. Le my mind went into a state where I couldn't remember the word. What if you just want to tell somebody like, "Hey, we're really doing something different now." Yeah, I, I pop it in a different function probably. Because it just well, what like if a mistake. Uh, you could do a comment, I guess. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. No, that, yeah, fill the space with a comment. I'm just messing around. I don't. I'm sure yeah. I probably have code with two lines, but yeah, but I, you'd I be fine if really the Linton's like, uh, 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 John. What are you doing? Or do those comments where, where like you have like a lot of ASCII art in them, where like a bunch of and like it's set off on all sides, sides by stars, and like if you ever have to change the <laughs> annoying because uh, <laughs> it gets all uneven. I guess you could put your, your keyboard in mode or whatever instead, so it doesn't have a problem. Oh, yeah. But wait, those are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll do is um, with comments, like if I want them to have like a max eighty character width or something. Yeah. Uh, you can set up like an extension in VS Code or whatever to just sort of break it up for you. Perfect. So oh, I like nice. know that shortcut in my in VS Code for the mm. extension that I have, but that's the only one. And I, I don't care as much. Like if I'm reading somebody else's code and they have a really long comment, I just have word wrap on, so it doesn't make a difference to me. But it's mm. whenever I'm like recording videos that other people are going to watch or doing other things like that. For whatever reason, I'm kind of anal about that, I guess. I just want it to be broken up. Yeah. But I, I don't do like the any other fancy stuff because like you said anytime you want to change anything which to me feels like all the time it's just obnoxious to do yeah des i think that's a good practice design for change like stuff will change we always i think too often think of like we're building the final thing here and instead of remembering we're building something for now and we'll probably change it at some point so design for that that's partly why um I'd, like another, I, I mentioned not using the struct for field names. Um, Any time you can be very explicit in code, I always prefer that. Um, I, one other thing is, I will never. I don't use panics. Do you ever use panics in your projects? I think it depends on what you're doing. Doesn't yeah, I, like I think so. Like if go, I'm just writing, it. sorry, if I'm writing like a hundred line script to do something real quick. Yeah. I don't mind having panics in there. 
Like right. I've seen like how you can set up a main function that calls a run function and returns an error. And I agree that yeah. that arguably could be just as easy, but sometimes I will find myself just throwing a panic in there and just not caring because right. of what it is. Right. Um, yeah. But like if I'm building an actual application, I very, very rarely am using panic. How about you, Carl? Panics, I will use, uh, if it's something where automatic error, it's like, like let's say you have a function and you're supposed to care of things and negative numbers don't work. You, you int for it, but I've, it's usually better just to um, use a regular int and say if the number is less than one or less than zero, then pan. Uh, things like that, where it's like, because you're being called programmatically, you know what the correct answer is. Um, so like in the standard library, there's uh, regex.must, template.must. There's a couple of things in the standard library that are dot .must, and the idea you have, have pre-coded these, you know, at compile, you know, you know based on the static source code that this should be correct, correct. Uh, and so you don't really care about for an error. If, if there's an error, then it means that you've, you've error and the, the error, error it can't be recovered from it's it's a yeah error yeah i think a good example of this which i think you sort of mentioned carl was like if you're using a slice and you use an out-of-bound index you always get a panic or a runtime error at that point yeah so like if i was creating like a linked list type or something and somebody tried to access something out of bounds like mm -hmm. having that return an error every single time is kind of annoying to deal with in the code when in reality, like that's somebody's logical error in their code. It's not really something you can recover from. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is I like I like the pattern of if it's a message to the engineer or to the developer, then a panic makes sense. And if it's a, you know if it's to the person doing the programming, but in both of those examples though, it's possible that 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 those values were coming from the user. So it's like. In a way, even if you err on the side of errors, even if it's not coming from the user, like it's just you get used to that same mechanism of it bubbling. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, the other time I will use a panic is if if something's going to panic anyway, and I want to sort of get in there before it and sort of panic before it. It's like in in real life, if you're in a situation with your friend and it's a bad situation the first person to panic like the other person can't also just panic they have to be like no calm down don't worry so you know i mean and then but you, you, and then if you're not really panicking then you're like okay i've calmed down now and no one's panicking so it's a good trick that but if 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 you're calling a method and it's going to panic because it could be nil something in there could be nil i might check if it's nil and if it is panic because it's going to panic anyway um because sometimes it's nice to avoid having that second error argument you can build more composable things sometimes. So yeah, okay. I probably still won't panic though much. I feel like if you see a case where panic is okay, you'll like it's it's rare, but I feel like when you see it and discuss it, it's a little bit easier to be like, okay, that makes sense in that one case, but don't mm -hmm. make a habit of it. <laughs> yeah. People are are really opposed to panics, and they errors on things like slice out of bounds and whatnot no. and i just feel like, like that's that's too far. far it's like if you if every single time you say say comma error that'd be too much mm. yeah interesting yeah you're probably right probably agree with that um okay john is there something else you avoid in go so i'm assuming everybody well maybe not everybody but I think, Matt, you've talked about this in the past. Using, like, mm -hmm. labels or anything that sort of reminds you of that, like, go to 10 type stuff that you saw in, like, basic programming. Yeah. I I pretty much never use it, and I'm, I'm, like, of the mindset that if I was teaching, like, an introduction to Go course, I don't think I'd ever bring it up. Because, really? like, they might see it at some point, and then they could be like, hey, what is this? And that's fine. But I don't think I'd want to encourage people to use that. And I feel like when you're showing them that stuff early on, they're going to want to start using it more. Yeah. And I just, like, if I was teaching, you know, for, like, somebody new to go, I don't think I'd even bring that up. I'd be like, you can, when you see it, you'll know it's there. If you run into a case where you need it, you can figure it out. But for now, you don't need to know about it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I mean, it's, the, it's oh, sorry, Carl. There's a delay oh, that makes us all. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm having a delay that means I keep talking over other people. Uh, uh, there, the main is it happening time... in your normal life as well, Carl? 
feel like that was intentional. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, How can I be? I'm, when uh, I, uh, I end up wanting to use like a double nested loop or like a loop with the switch yeah. statement inside of it or something and then you want to break of the switch statement, statement. but I, I agree that, that in most of those cases it's like to just have and you return from the sub function instead rather than having, having to use a, 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 a label yeah I agree that's how I always get around it just because you can create little anonymous functions in your other functions and they're sometimes very nice to just just kind of storytelling explain what you're doing break things up but you don't have to necessarily build a type and have you know state and all that stuff you can sort of have it all locally um i, lo I love stuff like that and i use that actually for um i use http handler funk a lot more than i use http handler even though i think if i was doing a package for that was part of like some middleware thing it would probably be both like you would provide both but just in everyday usage i like to i prefer the handler funk because you can just do things with functions very easily including middleware and things you can just have a function that you call that returns a new handler funk and you pass in the other one things like that um and you all the like having everything you need even like sometimes request response objects inside that one function you know, you do end up with a quite a meaty function or, you know, plant-based protein packed function. So there's a lot in there. But when you're maintaining it, you're like, oh, what's going to happen? I'm going to go to this endpoint and have a look. And then you have everything you need in that in that endpoint. There's no side quests. Mark Chaporis, Mark Chaporis um, at Grafana, someone I work with, has this idea of like you go, you have to go off on side quests and you get distracted. Um, and you get to not do that if you keep everything together and verbatim and verbose right up 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 up, up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I do have one question for you there, Matt. Go ahead, Carl. A lot of times in an application, you can end up with um, like okay. you could state right. Uh, uh, there's no reason that that you couldn't just say like, all right, I'll my variables at the package level as global state because you know it's just application and it's not a big deal but it's better to, to use them, them as just because place then you can see them and you it just conceptually makes it a lot easier to deal with if it's like app dot versus database right if database is just floating yeah. around at the where did, where did that come from what does that mean versus like if yeah. it's app dot data from the app yeah. Even if there's only ever going to be one app, agree you wouldn't have to this. Yes. Yeah, completely agree. I, I would actually do away with global state altogether. I get it for like, if you're writing quick little scripts, it's, it's, that's, I think, where it came from. It's just very easy to start doing things. But if you just, you know, there's so much, just by being explicit about everything makes the code so much more readable. And to think about like testing, like if you've just got one thing in global state, your test code often, if you're going to try and sort of mock it or something, it'll interfere with it in weird ways. And it's, it's sort of a bit too magic. So, yeah, I, I would say avoid global state altogether and just have, I mean, obviously variables and constants and stuff like that. But um, but not not state that's like, like errors I would probably keep there, you know, if they're part of the package level, if it's part of the API design. But other stuff, I'd, I'd probably pop it somewhere else. Do you write much code that uses like, um, like templates or, or like embedded files? Yeah, yeah I do. Because like one pattern I've seen is basically like you'll have a directory that you want to like, maybe it's your like email templates or something. Yeah. And essentially you'll have one Go file in that package that basically just has a global state like embed.fs type, you yeah. know, a file system there just so you can put it into your binary and have it there so like i think for things like that and templates and stuff like that that it's very mm -hmm. useful um I, I only mention this because i don't want people to listen and then be like i should never use these because I, I definitely think there are cases where like okay it's a lot easier to do this than to be like every time i start my app i have to go like tell it where all my email templates and everything else are versus like just import those and as a file system embedded file system and use them right I think I think that the key, key is, is with the uh, usages of 
of global state that aren't bad is there a set so some of those uh you, you can't, can't actually use the const keyword because it's for example door has to be, be a a fs very be a there's no such thing as an fs constant um, um but mm -hmm. I, but, but once the application the, starts up you're not changing it you're not my yeah and i, I think that's, that's pretty much a, a a very clear bright line. if you're going to have to modify it then it probably shouldn't live at the package level yeah. if you're modifying it after startup i think that also extends to the use of init i think init's okay if you're just using it to set up some basically constants or just variables that are need to be calculated but they are unchangeable probably throughout the app but that's it but that, in a way they're kind of that's not really global state in the sense of like storing state there that's going to change i think i think mutability of it might be quite important in this it'd be quite nice if you could do constant if you could do the same things you can do in variables in constants um but they just work slightly differently but you could do it with syntactic sugar probably couldn't you carl pop that PR out in the morning. There was a really interesting proposal by uh, Rovius. Have you guys run into him online? He's like genius about programming languages. Like he's this German, maybe Swiss German guy who he just understands the Go type system intensely intricate way. Uh, he had one blog post where he said what we should do about uh, package level state is to have dynamic variables. And it's ever since then, look at it, it should be a dynamic variable. Yeah. Uh, and so the way dynamic variables work is it older languages like bash. And, um, I think maybe in you use the, my keyword, it ends up being a dynamic variable, but, but basically no, no around anymore. You use dynamic variables because they stink. They're like totally unusable. For this one use case, and now what the when you call a function, and then you look at the global, what you see depends on who called it, and it's like it would it would paste, paste over the value with the new value. It's a really crazy idea. Uh, if you if you Google for it, I think you can find, find it, or we can. But it's uh, yeah, it's this really crazy, crazy idea. idea. Uh, if there's ever like a go, go to, to, I would be really, really interested to see an idea like that. Maybe. But. <laughs> it's not something that's going to change anytime soon. <laughs> so I think it was Dave Cheney that wrote the blog post about it, about making errors that are constants, but you have to like basically make strings and then you, you essentially make a type that's really a string underneath the hood and then you add the mm. error like function to it. Um, do you guys find yourself actually using that a lot in code? Like to actually make sure it's an error or constant error versus a variable error? No, I don't worry about it. If somebody's... The variables that should be constant problem. Yeah, for the errors thing, for a while I got into having a function or a, that would check. So you'd say like, is you know you kind of inspect the error, even if it is like just checking to see if it's that type. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'd do that these days with the new error stuff. It's I've done it in the past, and every time I've done it, I've just basically thought the same thing as Carl like if somebody's like mm. intentionally coming through here and trying to change these errors like they're going to screw yeah. something else up almost what are changing them to I, I'm, I've never seen somebody do it so I think it's one of those like oh these can change so somebody could do it and I'm like who just imports a package in their own package and then changes the errors like that I've never seen that happen counterpoint John let's do it <laughs> let's, let's do it it's like we have to get a popular enough package that people are importing it yeah. and then they somehow have to not realize that we're changing one of the errors because you could change hey, Matt, it, in make a it so that uh, in an init. Yeah, it, when you import testify, make it so that it changes I so that, uh, something like really funny. funny. Like instead of saying end of file, it says like <laughs> you are the prankster. <laughs> King That's prank. Not reading King, prank. King prank. Yeah, this would be a good YouTube prank. YouTube prank yeah. challenge. So yeah. you need a major release just for that. And then you need another yes. major release. Is that <laughs> a breaking change? I assume that's a breaking change. Oh, it, oh, it will break a few things. I'd say it's a breaking change. <laughs> You'd be like, nothing in my package changed. I don't know what you're talking about. 
What would happen to me in the community? I think I'd just be shunned. <laughs> something like I think everybody would immediately be like, was Matt hacked? I think that's probably... Oh, yeah. that. Would they? That's nice. They just assume well, it wasn't... I would not assume they were hacked. I assume you had just done it. Done it as a prank. Maybe King of the pranks. pranks. King of the pranks. Well, you did it for yeah, maybe that could be a regular section. That could be a new section of our show. Pranks. It's go pranks. And we just do loads of go pranks, like phone, phone Dave Cheney and say, oh, hello, sir, uh, your pizza's on its way. And he'll be like, I didn't order a pizza. And we'll be like, ah, go pranks. We got you big time, Dave, big time. And then hang up on him. I don't think this would work very well. I don't know if it's numbers. <laughs> And they'd right. really stop giving them to us if we started doing that. <laughs> you don't think? And there are no genies. Good. That's true. There's no genies in that. Gotta I've got some other ideas for new sections of the show. Uh, cleaning your tech time. We just spend ten minutes, and everyone cleans their tech. Get some an like antiseptic wipes. Clean your keyboards. Clean your trackpads. Your mouse. Give you, you know, I mean, give you nice, give your workspace a nice clean. That'd be a nice section. We'll just play some I think music. that's the most important thing I learned at my first job was, uh, you know, oh. I, I came to work every day and I, I just ate lunch at my desk. And oh. at the end of the year, my laptop was completely filthy. It was just disgusting. And what I learned from that is never, ever, ever under any circumstances <laughs> in front of a keyboard, <laughs> no matter what, even if there's not like a hostage situation, never. <laughs> just don't I do like it. I move my keyboard that's off, not happen. Like off to the side. So I'm like, all right, this yeah, is all my eating on. space. Hang on, Carl. What, what ever? Have you ever read the news? And they said, <laughs> oh, there's a hostage situation and the gunman has made people eat their lunch in front of their keyboards. People are livid. I've never heard that. No, this on, is America. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the yeah, next that doesn't happen. Because you guys have... <laughs> this I, mean, I can see it where, like, there's the hostage situation and they bring in the pizza for all the hostages and he's like, no, you can't leave this room. Just eat at yeah. your desk. Eat your desk, and everyone's like, "This is the worst hostage. This is the worst time I've ever been kidnapped or held at gunpoint because of this." Normally, at least, could have my lunch outside. Like people saying it pissed off, trying to <laughs> trying to say it so the guards hear them still, but not quite. So, can I tell a story related to this? Yeah, um, oh, related like, like to a this? Few, a few? Uh, no, related to like the. Thing <laughs> yeah. That's again related. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so a few weeks yeah. ago. A friend of mine had me come. He's like, hey, my video card's having issues. Can you come help me figure out what's going on? Aww. So I go to his video house, card. pull his computer apart, and it is just packed with, like, dust because he's never cleaned it out. Didn't really, mm. I don't think he thought about it, whatever. So mm -hmm. I took the video card, and I guess one of the fans in it had, like, I don't know if stuff had packed up on it so it became uneven or what, but basically one of the fans was, like, wobbling around. <laughs> so it, like, wasn't cooling, and, like, I think one of the fans was basically popping out, essentially. Right. So I'm like, yeah, your your video card's probably overheating at this point because that fan is just not doing anything. Mm. So yeah, definitely wow. take some time to clean your equipment, people. Oh yeah. Whoa. How how many years do you think that was? Oh, I think that computer is probably seven plus years. <laughs> wow. I don't think card. he built it. I think uh, another friend like helped him build it at one point, and he mm. just doesn't do a lot of hardware stuff. He's done more lately, yeah. but he just didn't really think about it or anything and. It also went through a couple of different moves. So between all of that, it's not really shocking. But yeah, but yeah it was just Being kind of funny getting in there. And I'm like, yeah, uh, this is uh, going to be an issue. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Tech cleaning time. Not a bad, not a bad shout. Is there anything else you do without? Do without is like... Whose turn is it? So strong. John, you, you haven't, I mean, Carl, you haven't had a go for a while. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, a list of things to avoid and go, which is kind of new, is uh, uh, this idea of useless uses. uses. Uh, um, so, so, if you guys um, aren't familiar, it's like uh, Unix, Unix uh, shell, useless uses of cat. Uh, and what it is, is it's just somebody having like a sort of humorous rant, rant about um, when you're command line shell and you use the cat command the concatenate command. command a lot of those cases you can just eliminate it instead use shell redirection and it's like sort of an old unit mm. um so useless uses of generics this is a thing that i see a lot uh, uh, recently where people they make a generic yeah. function but then that generic function calls a function that, that takes the any type and so then the generics 
providing any type safety. Oh. So specifically, this happens a lot where people will write a uh, JSON.unmarshal or JSON.marshal. Mm -hmm. Marshall and unmarshal, they just take the any type. So <laughs> safety, you've just added like this wrapper for no reason. Yeah. Uh, and so my... my Does it make them feel better? I think it does. does. I think people, like, they see that genericness and the, this is generic, but then it's like, but then you're just calling takes any type anyway, <laughs> so it's not actually generic. So are you referring to cases where they're, they're like, passing data in to, like, turn it into JSON and they're not actually getting anything back? No, it's where... Uh, somebody it's where will be writing... writing... Somebody will be writing, like, an ape... Sorry. And they'll, they'll say, say okay, okay, given type T, then I'm going to data and turn it into JSON and send it over HTTP. And it's like, okay, okay but if take the data, data and you turn it into JSON, JSON, you've lost all the type safety. So take the any type. And you don't need generics. For regular code, code that would have worked without generics. Okay, so you're not referring to cases. Like in my head, I'm thinking head, I could write a wrapper around sync.map that uses generics. And now all of a sudden I can like actually create a typed like sync.map wrapper essentially that actually gives me back the types that are already in that type. I don't have to go through all those hoops of converting from any back to my type. But I feel like that's no, very that, different than what you're expecting. Yeah, in the case, because what you're doing with the sync.map is you're trying to make it so that all, all of the, the variables inside of the map have the same type. Uh, and so the fact that it has an any type is kind of like hidden or... Um, yeah, but then with like the, the JSON one, it's it's not like you're trying to get the JSON function to have the same type. I don't know, or like all the. the... I, I think you're, you're really just though. yeah. Like if, you're, mm -hmm. if you're responding yeah, but... to a web request and you're going to call that and you're not actually going to like return that same type to them, it doesn't really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Or even if you are going to return the same type, a lot of time it's better sure. um, just because of the way the type inference works to do things. That, in, if you pass it as an argument, then you don't have to explicitly declare the types. If you're passing things as arguments, then it's, uh, you know, the way that like JSON and Marshall work. You just pass like the pointer and get the pointer out again. Uh, that works too. You don't actually need a generic for that. Yeah. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Um, John, I heard a rumor, a little birdie told me, you don't use internal packages. Is that true? Um, not really, ever. I can't think of a time that I've actually used it. Yeah. But I think this is also like a byproduct of like where you're working and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think it's a good example of like the type of feature where, like generics are an example of this too when they were coming, where a lot of people are like, I've never needed them. We shouldn't add them to the language. And I think they ignore the fact that there's probably a whole subset of the Go community that could really mm. benefit from them. <laughs> and internal packages, to me, are like that in the sense that if I was at a big company with like a big mono like mono repo, I could see internal packages being very useful. But since that's not how I'm working right now, it's just never been something I've needed to use or even messed around with. Yeah. yeah. Carl, do you I, use it? I do use it. it day to day? Yeah. yeah. I... Basically, everything I do, do, I open source unless there's can't open source it. And so for that, I do like to use the internal just this is the boundary of stuff, stuff that you can look at and you can't look at, um, like kind of a request of packages. Uh, and inside of that, that, uh, that does the testing test. stuff. Um, and it's like, OK, mm -hmm. recur you know, relying you know, test, just, you know, and don't mess with the test stuff in there. Yeah. Um, so are you, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Are so you doing it so that you can still export the stuff and use it throughout your code, but you are basically telling anybody who's going to consume that API that, or that library that, mm -hmm. hey, you shouldn't rely on this to stay constant because it's something that I might change. Yeah. 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 It's just like whatever the inter package Jar. but it's not, not something that I want anybody else yeah. to really look put this online as open source 
everything is open source, source but I, I don't vouch for it in anyway you shouldn't use it <laughs> but so john maybe because you don't do enough open source like you know i'm such sure a that's... hero like carl well <laughs> that maybe that's the issue um yeah. or I, I maybe it's just the way i'm testing stuff too it's hard to say yeah but i think it's, it's right if you've got a package people will depend on anything they can get their group their grubby mitts on so um having internal stuff you literally can't import that can you what happens if you try and import an internal package call uh i assume it gives you an error message i don't know hmm. what their message is like, over there, like their own yeah. error but i don't know i was expecting you to know the exact error message i should have memorized it before the show but you guys told me at the last minute so i didn't go down my list of things uh, when you, you use internal checked. carl are you um do you use like nested internals if that makes sense where you could have like oh, no. C as like different folders and then internal and then have more below that no I never just have the sense? one yeah i know what you mean okay. like maybe i would like want to protect this from that i think but no i just only ever set up one and okay. whatever is in the internal oh, see, that, that was the one that also threw me off a lot <clears throat> for like some projects that's the one that threw me off a bit too because it's like you're protecting your code from yourself from like you importing your own stuff somewhere else and i'd like a big mono repo with a big company i could see that but like if it's me and one other person working on a small open source project i'm like mm. oh, i don't know if we really need this to do that yeah you get you get a lot for free by having small little teams like when you scale and have more people collaborating you know it's just the nature of it there's trade-offs things are different you do extra work to protect things like that you probably I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's 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 that time, dear listener. It's your favorite time. It's everyone's favorite time. It's time for unpopular opinions. I actually think you should probably leave. Do you use browsers to remember your passwords, fellas? I this do. is a trick. You're trying to trick me into giving get... up security details. This is a long con <laughs> fishing job. And you've just. No. no. Up for episode after episode. No. Oh, Carl, your jokes are so funny. Come back on the show no, no. and tell me. They are good. I get it. Yeah. I see where this is no, going. I'm... Absolutely not, Carl. But what is your favorite six digit verification code that you've had? Oh, yeah, I think the favorite one I've ever had. Uh, that's, that's probably the time that I... Three, four, five, six, that was just great. Couldn't believe it. That would be amazing if you ever got that. If it's truly random, that's as likely as any other combination, but mind you, not in that order. If, if, any other combination in an order, in a specific order. But just feels special, doesn't it? Um, I once got mostly one... I got one once that was just zeros and ones, like a little binary one. And I've never, I've never had so much fun verifying. I think just got to type, tap that in. Like, oh, I loved it. No, I'm thinking like browsers. Sometimes it'll say, oh, like I use a, a password manager. So I use a thing where I put all my passwords in one thing. So if if that gets hacked, then I'm, that's the end of end. <laughs> but the assumption is that's quite safe. Um, but sometimes also browsers will remember passwords. It'll say, like, oh, do you remember this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, just remember it. That'd be great. And then sometimes it, 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 it'll change for some reason because you have to go through a different device. You've changed your password. And then you come back and it's remembered your previous password, which is fine the first time. I can't expect it to read mine yet. But I then change the password and submit through successfully and it doesn't update. It doesn't update its memory doesn't update the password it's left and then every time i come through that same route it remembers the old one and that's my unpopular opinion browsers shouldn't do that they should update or they should go away any objections um <clears throat> this was different than i expected is how i put it <laughs> i will say that what you're expected. describing is exactly why i don't store any passwords in chrome anymore Right. Like, I just felt like it got so annoying that it would constantly have the wrong password for different things. Yeah. So I just use one external tool 
that I can have on all my devices. And I like it actually frustrates me when Chrome tries to suggest something because I'm like, mm. I don't use your password thing anymore. Like I thought mm. I disabled this. Stop trying to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. But why don't you just use one password instead? And then it, if it, it'll remember it right, won't it? Well, I'm, <clears throat> so I use one password and what is it? Like that's where all my stuff is. So I'm saying like whenever I had Chrome, I, I don't care if you know which one I use. But whenever I was using Chrome stuff, like I feel like I'd have them stored in both. Like you said, you'd try to update. It wouldn't update. It was just frustrating. So I just disabled it. So like, I almost feel like browsers just on one hand, I like that they do it because there's a whole class of people who are never going to use like one password, last pass or any of those types of software. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it leads to cases like that, which I think might turn people off of it, especially if you've mm -hmm. got somebody who runs on an iPhone running Safari and then they go jump on a computer and run Chrome or something. Yeah. I've run yeah, into I things where startup idea. I'm sorry, Carl, go on and tell my startup idea. I've run into things where, um, my 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 iPad weren't syncing to my iPhone, and I didn't realize this for like some Ugh. number of months. It was like the I, the iPad was just becoming like yeah. Well, because how often do you have a new iPad password? Like you know, I only ever use the iPad to browse in bed. Uh, like before I go to bed, I'll read Hacker News, and then I have Hacker News set up. There's like an anti procrastination feature in Hacker News where you can tell it to um, <laughs> to disable itself after a certain amount of time. And the message comes yeah. up and it says, go back to work. You've set your answer. And it's like, no, it's not go back to work. It's go back to doing more entertaining entertainment options. Like that's why it's there. It's because otherwise I'll just yeah. spend the whole night reading comments instead of like doing things that are actually fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, my iPad for some number of months, it was like all of the passwords I made on it, like just got and never got out and I had to reset all those. It was very annoying. Mm. No, that just sounded annoying. But you got through it. I got through it. I survived. I'm a survivor. Just like that time they took me to pizza at my desk. Yeah, they will do that. Yeah, no, my startup idea was basically, you know, one password. It's good. Mm -hmm. Password security and that. Same thing, but two passwords. Twice as secure. You just put two passwords in to get through that first thing. I and think you can have all your passwords. But sell it is half a password go smaller go. zero passwords i think negative really one password at all these websites we give you the we give you the password we tell you the password and you tell us if that's okay that's how you sign in i like it you tell us yeah password or not you said <laughs> this will send you three passwords and you click on the one that's real yeah That's Isn't good. that how like certain background checks work for stuff? They'll like when you're going through it or whatever, it's like which of these addresses did you live at? Yeah. Oh, I hate no, those so because this is not uh, top secret information. Well, one, it's not top secret information, and then two, it's like wrong. Uh, it it'll like give me information that it's like it's tangled up with my spouse or something, and it's like I never lived in that city. I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe my spouse lived hmm. there 20 years ago. It was, but you have to lie then because you think you know what it, what it's getting at. Yeah, you have to guess what it is. It's like, oh, I don't know. Even if it's wrong. I thought you were saying, oh, yeah, but it gets it wrong. But it's supposed to, isn't it? Two of them are supposed to be wrong. Carl, you're like, I didn't live at these three addresses. These two are wrong. But that's the point of the check. <laughs> no, all, all three are wrong. <laughs> oh, Sometimes yeah, all, all three are wrong. wrong. Yeah, a second when it says click all the bicycles and it's just a picture of a dog. And it's like, well, I can't, how do I get past? And then you, it takes a couple of hours and then you think, I can just click, click verify now or whatever. It was a trick one. And it worked. <laughs> I believe it. That's when I got my zeros and ones verification code there. So that cheered me up after. Well, dear listener. I'm afraid that's all the time we have today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Go Time. Go time. If you did, please tell all your friends about it. If you didn't, tell your enemies. Um, either way, let's talk about it. And then, you know, you can tell them about Carl. And then they'll say, what? No, that's not real. And you say, no, listen. And they'll put it on and then they'll get to meet Carl in real life. So that'd be lovely for them. Well, that's it. Thanks, Carl, for coming back. Really appreciate it. Great to see you as usual. 
Matt, I love that you uh, you needed somebody to be on a, a kind of wacky episode where uh, we just sort of uh, goof around and you thought of me. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yep. And of course, John Calhoun. I don't think you thought of me. Let's not pretend here. I'm pretty sure Jared just forced me in here. He needed somebody to be the straight man. He's like, look, I can't let Matt go on his own. We got to put somebody there. It's got to be some. Ad- okay, well, I'm afraid that is all the time we have. We'll see you next time on Go Time. Bye, everybody. Bye. believe it's over already i know that's i wouldn't believe if it didn't say it in the corner i know wasn't that didn't that fly we start we started quite late oh we started at 3 30 or after 3 30 yeah yeah Yeah, i got back at 3 30 22 we always record at three so i was for some reason thinking we started a little after three and i'm like man this one's been going on quite a while like Yeah, yeah well luckily the little record button has the time in it so thanks for watching live everybody Um, We'll see you next time.